Celtic sea salt has been getting an insane amount of attention, but doesn't really live up to the hype. Oh, hi, Mark. What's up, Fichero fam? Welcome back to my channel, where I'd like to explore everything that life has to offer. And a huge part of this channel is like health, fitness, supplementation, of course, trying things new in general. And this has been getting an insane amount of hype. If you look at the searches online, on trends, on graphs, there is a massive spike, especially in the last year, just for Celtic sea salt. And like a lot of things randomly just blowing up, it brings up the important question. Is it just a fad or is there actual some weight to it? For example, at least at the exact time of this video, ice baths and cold plunges are super popular. However, there's a ton of health benefits to them. And I think there's a lot of justification as to why they're getting so much hype. On the other end, there have been numerous products, numerous ones that were just snake oil and didn't really live up to the hype. So that being said, what about Celtic sea salt? Now, I hate YouTubers that just ramble on and waste your time. I'm going to give you a short answer and then a long answer. Short answer, in some ways, it is overhyped, I think, in certain ways. Other ways, not as much. So it's not a straightforward answer. But if I had to lean towards one, and I might as well say I have no affiliation with Celtic sea salt or the company or anything, I'd say it's overhyped. If I had to lean towards one or the other, although there are some justifications as to why, I'd say it is overhyped. With that being said, let's get into the long answer and the science and everything. Now, taking a step back, and this seems random, but very important. For me, I do intermittent fasting. So I don't eat from 10 p.m. till 2 p.m. the next day. Typically, what I do is I wake up, I have water and... uh some black coffee, right, with nothing in it. I usually then film videos, in case you're curious. Film videos, I usually get a bunch of work done. And then around 2 p.m., I then take my pre-workout supplements, break my fast that way, work out, et cetera, et cetera. So during the morning, I don't have any nutrients really besides water and coffee. And a big suggestion that I've gotten for a lot of people doing intermittent fasting is to have electrolytes. However, a lot of powders like Liquid IV or other ones have a ton of sugar. There's a ton of just stuff in them, for lack of a better word, that isn't really the best. And in addition, as you can imagine, most electrolyte supplements, because they do have a lot of just random other additives and stuff in them, do break your fast. So a huge suggestion is to actually put salt in your water. As you can see here, drinking salt water or a sports drink can help replenish those lost electrolytes, improve hydration, and potentially enhance performance. It may also be useful in hot and humid conditions when people are sweating more than usual, leading to a higher loss of water and electrolytes. I will also say as a side note, it is super important as well in high altitudes. So for example, I was just in Colorado. Here's a video of me doing a handstand on top of a, a 14er, which is basically any mountain in Colorado that's above 14,000 feet elevation. Being that high up, you almost feel like you're drugged. That's the only way I can word it. If you're like lightheaded, it feels kind of trippy. Even just a few steps can be exhausting. And a big way to overcome that is hydration. And not only that, but also having electrolytes. Now, typically for me, what I personally do is take this half gallon jug. And what I used to do is put Himalayan salt in it, shake it up, right? It's only half gallon. One huge pro tip I heard is if you're putting salt in your drink for mainly electrolytes and hydration purposes, if it starts to taste too salty, you put in too much. So I put in some Himalayan salt, shake it up, and that's pretty much it, right? And like I said, my main use of this, and again, this is very important, is to get some more electrolytes and be more hydrated with some more nutrients, electrolytes wise, because I'm doing intermittent fasting. And I will say, being honest, I have noticed a distinct difference when I do do that. I feel like I feel more hydrated and more in it, so to speak, because of course, when it comes to intermittent fasting, you're not getting any nutrients. So as you can imagine, getting a little more electrolytes, not a bad idea. Of course, I do want to say as well, like I mentioned in every video, I am not a doctor and I don't pretend to be one. With that being said though, what about Celtic sea salt? The big claim is that Celtic sea salt has been said to be better than normal salt. But is that actually true? There are a lot of claims on the Celtic sea salt website and a lot of other sites online in terms of like holistic benefits and all this kind of stuff. So let's look at this article, why people are taking Celtic sea salt with their daily water. So this got very popular on TikTok initially and it's kind of took off. And the biggest thing is you can see right here is from someone named Barbara O'Neill. 
and she talked about it, that the technique involves letting a few crystals of Celtic sea salt dissolve on the tongue before drinking water to improve water absorption in the body because of the magnesium it contains. The idea is it does keep you more hydrated. Now, here's the big thing, as you can see right here. According to the Mayo Clinic, Celtic sea salt is nutritionally very similar to table salt. In fact, while Celtic sea salt is said to have traces of dozens of minerals that table salt doesn't, most of them, including magnesium, can be found more abundantly in foods. So if getting enough of these trace minerals is important to you, dietary changes will be more effective. That is very important to mention. I'll kind of talk about all this recapping at the end. But like I said, I do intermittent fasting. So I'm not really getting any nutrients until I have food at 2 p.m. So let's say if you do wake up and you don't do intermittent fasting and you eat normally, just eating healthy in general, like having a healthy breakfast, might not make Celtic sea salt as necessary to get these nutrients and these minerals. Now jumping down here in terms of, is it actually worth it? Do all the claims of the health benefits make paying about six times as much for Celtic sea salt as worth it for the average person who doesn't drink enough water? Probably not. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this, where I'm not saying Celtic sea salt is bad, but I do think it's a bit overhyped. I mean, if I go to Amazon right now, it looks like it's $18 for a pound, at least at the exact time of this video. I could be honest too, when I bought this, and this is one pound, by the way, I spent $30 for this pound. I'm not gonna lie, I spent way too much money on it, which I do have to be honest, when I bought this, it was during a time of when everything was sold out. So I spent $30 for this pound. I think a pound is typically like five to $10. I think it's one of those situations where a lot of people bought it and just resold it at a way higher profit because of all the hype. And for me, I was like, you know what? I kind of want to try it. Why not? Another thing I will say for one pound, there's roughly about 300 servings. You do get a lot of servings and a serving typically, I might as well show you, is one quarter teaspoon. What I do now to show you, I got my uh, gallon jug, is I take one quarter teaspoon, so like that, if I'm gonna show you like this, let me curve the angle, but not spill any. Take one quarter teaspoon, put it in my half gallon jug, shake it up, and then go about my day and drink this normally. I personally don't do the whole thing of putting the salt on my tongue. I'd rather just put it in water, shake it up, and then just sip it normally. Being honest, it doesn't really taste too salty. I think especially too, this is a half gallon jug. If you have a smaller water bottle, then of course, it's gonna be a little bit more salty, right? So definitely do it based off your overall taste and everything. But for me, I don't do the whole salt on the tongue or anything like that. I just put it in this, shake it up, drink it, and I'm good to go. Now going back to this article, as with any health related question, it's always a good idea to consult with your doctor before changing your diet or lifestyle. This is a big thing too, an extra pinch of salt here and there shouldn't do too much harm, but keep in mind that the American Heart Association recommends no more than 2,300 milligrams of salt a day for healthy adults, which is about one teaspoon. And with Celtic sea salt, one quarter teaspoon has 480 milligrams of sodium, which is roughly about 20% of your daily value. So let's say if you do have this in the morning, like I am, you're already getting one fifth of the sodium content you should have for that day. Lastly, let's go to this article. Is Celtic sea salt actually better for you than regular salt? This is the big question I had for a while. It's like, okay, I do know there are some health benefits that have been demonstrated to having salt in water in terms of hydration, electrolytes, and more. But how does it compare if you do a versus, so to speak, of Celtic sea salt versus normal salt? As you can see right here, the company that makes Celtic sea salt claims it has a number of trace minerals and vitamins that may be good for your health. But is Celtic sea salt good for you? And is it any better than regular table salt? Now going into the history, it was originally sourced from France, but over time the company has sourced its salt from a number of coastal areas in Guatemala, Hawaii, and other locations. And Celtic sea salt, or sea salt in general, is made by evaporating ocean water or ocean from saltwater lakes. It has a different texture and taste than table salt. It also contains some trace minerals, which vary depending on the water source the salt comes from. Does Celtic sea salt have any health benefits? Probably not. Sodium is a necessary mineral involved in body processes, but this is the benefit of salt in general. Whether it's table salt, or sea salt. The benefits of Celtic salt in particular are largely anecdotal. Although the company claims it provides vital trace minerals and elements, as well as natural electrolytes, detailed information on the salt's mineral content is not available. And as they stated before, the company sources its salt from different areas. So the vitamin and mineral content may also be variable. Now here are a bunch of different claims that have been made about Celtic salt, healing damaged skin, promoting cell growth, supporting thyroid health, 
relieving joint pain and leg cramps, reducing mucus. And if I go through all these, you can see no evidence, no evidence, no evidence, limited evidence, and limited evidence. And the last thing I do wanna note here, as I mentioned before, is of course, there can be a negative downside to having too much salt as consuming too much sodium is linked to negative health outcomes. With all that being said, is it worth it or not? Now, first off, I have to be honest, like I said, I primarily have salt in my water. And like I said, I only do a quarter teaspoon. I do not go above that. I do that in the morning to get some more electrolytes and minerals in my body because I'm not having any until 2 p.m. And especially, let's say, when I'm filming videos, right, as I'm doing now and I'm making music and I do that in a fasted state, getting a little more electrolytes and being more hydrated, not a bad idea. Another thing, remember, just drink a lot of water. I did an experiment in 2015. This also was my first ever video to crack over 100,000 views on YouTube where I drank a gallon of water a day for 40 days and it genuinely changed my life. I now have anywhere between, I'd say a gallon and two gallons a day. I know, don't get me wrong, there are stories of people saying, oh, they drank too much water and unfortunately died from it. You have to try really hard for that to happen. Having more water is almost always more beneficial. So I'll say that just in general. But anyway, reeling that back to Celtic sea salt, if let's say you don't do intermittent fasting, you wake up, you have a very balanced breakfast, you have a very healthy meal, this might not be necessary at all. You might just be adding in extra sodium into your diet. Now, let's say though, you are in my situation where either A, you do intermittent fasting. Let's say you're going to a high altitude climate like Colorado. Let's say you've been working out all day, you've been sweating a ton and you're extremely dehydrated. Will adding in salt into your water help replenish those electrolytes you have lost? Yes. But when you compare normal salt or Himalayan salt or whatever to Celtic sea salt, the benefits tend to be the same. Yes, as I mentioned, things are a bit less processed when it comes to Celtic sea salt. So maybe this is theoretically a little bit better, but not by that much, in my opinion, especially when you consider the price.